Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue our journey watching Colt and Larissa. This is a new season, so let's get into it. And this is my puppy, Leia. Let's get to the show. At the time, she was living in Brazil. She was the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. She was my dream girl. When I first met Larissa, it was kind of an awkward experience. Her English wasn't very good, and I didn't speak any Portuguese. But after a while, we started to really hit it off. And after having spent five days with Larissa in person, I decided to bring her over to the United States on a K-1 fiancé visa. <laughs> All right, that's interesting. I don't remember that detail from before. He says that they were in person for five days before that she came to the United States. So before we started watching the show, they had been in person for just five days. One could say that they weren't a match made in heaven and that if they were given more time to date, meaning that they were in the same town and there wasn't all the pressure of the visa, that after a couple of weeks, they would have discovered that they weren't ultimately made for each other and they never would have got married. I don't know, but I suspect that would be true. I think I'm ready to start dating again. No, 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 no. It's way too soon for Cole to start dating. His heart is still broken and he's not gonna make any good decisions. To be honest with you, I'm lonely and I want someone to share my life with. I want you to be happy. I want you to be in a relationship. I want you to have what you really, really deserve. But you need to find out what you are before you want someone else to fall in love with you. All right, so this is an idea that is in our culture quite prevalently. Prevalently, is that a word? It's quite prevalent in our culture to believe that after a breakup, particularly if it's a significant one, you need to wait a, a certain amount of time before you start dating again. All right, so it's an interesting idea and let's evaluate it. So what are the outcomes that we would be worried about? So forget about Colt, just think about anybody. Uh, they go through a divorce and they're about to date other people and they're saying they're lonely and you're like worried about them. And you think, well, you know, I've been taught by the internet and by culture that you're not really supposed to date people right after a major divorce. And uh, so let's look at, you know, what kind of things would people be actually worried about? Well, I'm guessing what people are worried about is that the next relationship is either going to be a rebound, meaning that it's not emotionally meaningful to you. It's just a relationship, a throwaway relationship that you engage in because you just need to be with somebody or you have something to prove like that you're still lovable or that people will be attracted to you. And once that is proven to you, you kind of reject that person and say, okay, I still have it. People still like me. And that relationship served its pur purpose and I'm moving on. So that's one thing that I think people worry about. The other thing I think people worry about is that if you just jump from relationship to relationship, you're prone to having the same train wreck of relationship over and over and over again. So are those claims accurate? Well, the research, it's hard to pin down because what do we mean by a train wreck of a relationship? What do we really mean by a rebound relationship? How do we define that? These are really difficult things to study with research, you know, with scientific empirical observation. I'll tell you from anecdote that it really runs the gambit. I'll tell you from anecdotal experience, it, it really is varied and it's case by case basis. For some people, when I work with them clinically, we discover that it probably is a good idea if they took a break. For other people, jumping right back into relationships and right back into dating is what's best for them. And largely, it's just a choice that people make based on what they feel like they wanna do. So for Colt, the thing that I would hope for him, given the little that we understand about his personality from this TV show, and as I always say, there's really no way I can know who these people are on the show. Everything I'm saying is based on the little bit of information that we get. And so everything I say has to be taken with that in mind. Also, when I work clinically with people, they come to my office, I talk with them for weeks, months, years, and they tell me about their inner life and I, you know, how they think and how they feel and how they react to things. And it gives me over time an idea of their personality. So I certainly can't evaluate people on a show. But anyway, the little bit that we know about him is that he seems to not have any friends really, or any people that are in his life aside from his mother. 
And so I think he's not only looking for a romantic partner, but I also think he's just looking for a friend and a companion, someone that he can hang out with that is his, his age and interested in the things that he's interested in. That's just a guess. So the fact that he's saying he's lonely, that sounds probably accurate given his lifestyle, really. Could he go into a dating relationship right away and have it go well? Sure, certainly. If he went to therapy and worked on himself, which the people on the show never do, <laughs> or they go to one session, which is essentially kind of useless on some level. I mean, you can get something out of one session, but you're not going to get a lot. Anyway, so what would I be hoping for Colt uh, in terms of how, they, how he can get his needs met? Well, we saw how him and Larissa fit together. It was a lot of conflict, a lot of hurt feelings, calling the police, a lot of chaos, a lot of misunderstanding from what I could tell, not a lot of opportunity for warmth and togetherness, at least what was shown to us on the TV show. Maybe behind the scenes there was a lot of warmth, but you know, honestly, we didn't see much of that, which makes me wonder about his history. What, what, what's his history like before Larissa, before being on the show? What was his track record like in relationships? But if he were to date people right away, there's a way to do it that will reduce the risks of bad things happening. You could date people and you could be like, look, I just want to be honest with you. I just came out of, divor out of a divorce and I still have a lot of feelings about that. So I don't want to be, I don't want to give you the impression that somehow I don't have that in my recent history. And I'm not really quite sure what I'm looking for. And honestly, I'm worried that uh, maybe I don't do well in relationships because I've had some pretty bad relationships in the past. But I'd love to get to know you better and hang out. And I, I just hope we can take this one step at a time and not rush into things. That's one approach that someone could take. Um, there's other approaches too, but the, the key is, is that you're honest with the people that you're dating, that you recognize that your personality played a role in your past relationships, and that if you don't watch it, if you don't go to therapy and try to become aware of those things and try to heal from your past relational traumas, you're very likely to repeat the same mistakes over and over and over again. So that's what I would hope for Colt, but we'll see what happens as we watch the show. I'm guessing you've watched ahead and you know what happens, but I don't. I always hope that the people on the show can find love and that they can find stable relationships, stable attachments, that they can just live regular lives where they have companionship, they have a relationship, a spousal relationship if they want that, that they can be mutually supportive, that they can take care of each other. You know, at the end of every episode, I say, you know, please take care of yourself and take care of others because we all deserve it. That applies to the cast members too. I, I really hope that they can do that for themselves. Those are my hopes. Let's see what happens. Hey, Deserving Listeners, as you know, I'm constantly recommending that people go to therapy. We all need therapy from time to time. One of the options available that is definitely worth checking out is betterhelp.com. So if you're looking for a therapist, I would give it a try by going to betterhelp.com slash Kirk. Make sure you use the slash Kirk because you get 10% off your first month and it helps us out. I get a lot of emails from you saying that you're looking for a therapist. As you watch these videos, I know many of you have been motivated to find your own therapist, but I know it can be really hard to find a good one to work with. Like I said, one of the options available to try is betterhelp.com slash Kirk. And you should know that this service is available to clients worldwide, which is amazing. I've been told that you can start communicating with your therapist in under 24 hours. You can message with your counselor anytime. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. And I've been told that it's often less expensive than in-person therapy. So go to betterhelp.com slash Kirk to get 10% off your first month of therapy today. Why are you running away with it? I got a shower. Now, of course, this is a family system where it's a mother and an adult son living together. And their dynamic is something that we've seen a little bit of. Now, as a family therapist, I'll say I don't have much data based on the show. We have very little data, really, to evaluate their relationship. And the mom, from what I can tell, 
really depends on her son to provide her with just a relationship. Same with Colt. It looks like the mom has no one outside of Colt that she's close to, that she can depend on, that she can even just hang out with. And when you have that one person, why would that be? Well, I've been hypothesizing total speculation that the mom believes that she's not good enough to have friends or there's something defective about her. We saw when push came to shove and there was conflict, she seemed to kind of descend into a space of feeling like there was something deeply wrong with her on the inside. You could kind of sense that despair that she would feel. For her, the prospect of Colt dating again and also moving on with his life and moving out of the house and having his time spent with other people would be very threatening to her and be very worrisome to her. And so what I would hope for the mom is that she can find other people to be with aside from Colt so she doesn't have all her eggs in one basket, if you will. What my mother doesn't know is that I actually started dating again. I don't usually keep secrets from her, but I know this time she would not approve. I really wasn't looking for anything specific, but this gorgeous little redhead reached out to me named Jess. All right, interesting. So Jess, let's find out who Jess is. And today I'm heading to Chicago to spend a weekend with her. This is only our second meeting together. Jess lives in the United States, but she's an au pair on a visa. And she's Brazilian. After Larissa, I never really intended to date another Brazilian. Jess sort of fell out of the sky and landed in my lap. But this is the main reason why I haven't told my mother about Jess. I really need to see if this woman is the right one for me before I involve my mother in another possible heartbreak. I can't let that happen again. So he's keeping a secret from his mother, which is totally fine. There's no reason why any adult son needs to disclose all of his dating life to his mother. But it does point to an issue in the family. I'm guessing Colt wants to tell the mom, at least so that he doesn't have to keep a secret from the mom. But he can't, I'm guessing, we haven't really heard, if, and if I worked with them, I would really want to know, Colt, why are you keeping this from her? What, what are you worried about? My guess is, is that Colt would say, well, I'm worried that my mom is going to be very upset. And I'd say, tell me more about that. What do you mean by upset? It's upset in what way? Well, that my mom would just be really worried about me and she would judge it and she would try to encourage me not to do it that I shouldn't date another Brazilian person or I shouldn't date anyone at all. And then I would ask, well, why do you think your mom would be very worried? Why do you think she would be very focused on that? I don't know, but I suspect, like I was saying earlier, that the mom just doesn't have anyone else in her life. If I was to just take a stab in the dark, I think what this family went through was there was the dad, the mom, and Colt, and they were very insular. It's just a guess. I don't know. And I also, I, I would love to know what the dad, Colt's dad, was like as a father. I wonder if there was something going on there in terms of conflict in the family. I don't know. So you have the father, the mother, Debbie, and you have Colt. And over time, for whatever reason, they were very insular and I'm guessing suffering in some way. The mom seems like she might be suffering throughout her life with self-esteem issues that Colt might also have a similar problem, I don't know. But it makes me wonder if Colt and the mom needed to stick together to have an alliance in the family against the father. There's, again, it's just total speculation, but this would be an, an hypothesis that I would pursue. Who knows, but, and maybe we'll fi find out as this season goes, I'm guessing we won't, because they don't usually talk about this sort of historical stuff, but there's just a lot of things that could have happened in the past in this family that could lead to the mother feeling very worried about Colt leaving the family. But one detail we do know is that the father died. Debbie's husband died. And that when he left, there's a lot of grief that the family's gonna feel, it's, it's just natural. Particularly if it was uh, unexpected or who knows. But that could have drawn the mother and Colt even closer together because they were together in their grief. And maybe if they didn't have anyone else around them to help them with their grief, they became even more dependent on each other and more worried about separation. The mother is, is again, it's just an hypothesis that I would pursue if I were to work with her, it would be that the loss of the husband, and I'm guessing other losses in her life, 
that she's down to just one person, which is her son. And if her son starts to date, that is movement away from her. And then she's all alone and she has nobody. And she doesn't believe that she, anyone else will love her or anyone else will be close to her. And when your needs are being threatened in that way, then you're gonna fight. And one of the ways that I think she fights is to say to Colt, don't date other people or even to oppose other people's involvement in Colt's life. I don't know. But what I will say is that lying to people, there's a potential harm that can happen, right? The mom, when she does find out, because I'm guessing she will, that Colt is dating Jess, that the mom's going to be very hurt by that. All right. Well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Thanks for joining me out there. Please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.